Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Belgium once again for the first time in what feels like a good long while. We're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a couple of times before. I've had some nice and really interesting beers from these guys over the years, and I think it's fair to describe these guys as one of the best known names in world beer today. But the beer in question for this review is a kind of new, lighter and more sessionable version of their flagship Brew. So I'm curious to see how it turns out and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So let's crack on then. For this review we are going to go to a little place called Braindun which is about halfway between Brussels and Antwerp down in Belgium and we're going to have a look at another beer from Brauerei Duvel Murthat. So this particular beer is the Duvel 666. It comes in at 6.66% ABV, as the name suggests, and this one is a Belgian blonde beer. So uh, yeah, really curious to see what this one has in store for us. This beer was released originally in uh, February of 2021. We got it a little bit later here in Sweden through the Tilfelig assortment uh, in System Bolaga. I believe it was released in early March of 2021 if I remember rightly but uh, yeah like I said this is basically a lighter version of the flagship Duvel beer which comes in at 8.5% ABV but uh, yeah really curious to see how it turns out the 666 of course is kind of a reference to the name Duvel of course is uh, is devil in, um, in Flemish so yeah I think it should be a really interesting beer that's nice to return to these guys after a good little while and a big shout out to Cedric at the brewery who I know watches the channel so uh, yeah looking forward to this and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well so let's see how we get on so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the links to my other reviews that I've done from Duval Murhad before and we will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider Consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Belgian beers that I've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity, not as often as I would like at the moment, unfortunately. But as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos. And the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Duval Murthat then. So, as I've mentioned to you already, this particular beer, Duval, is brewed by Duval Murthat Brewery, which is a Flemish family-owned brewery, and it was founded back in 1871 by Jan Lerard Murthat, who came from a family of brewers in Steenhoefel. Um, but this brewery is based in Brindun in Belgium. It's a small town of about 3,000 people, about halfway between Brussels and Antwerp. But in the 1970s, this company struggled financially, and so they bottled and distributed two bulk beer from Denmark, which allowed them to create a large distribution network for their own Duvel beer. But Duvel Murtkat is a... Uh, are also an investor in the Omegan Craft Brewery in Cooperstown over in New York and they also purchased Brasserie de Chouf and the Deconic Brewery in 2006 and 2010 respectively. In 2014 they also acquired Boulevard Brewing in Kansas City, Missouri over in the States and in the following year in 2015 they purchased Firestone Walker in California. So these guys have built up quite a portfolio for themselves over the years but from what I understand Duval just kind of let those breweries get on with it and do their own thing and then the, the breweries take advantage of the large distribution network that Duval has. Uh, but the Duval beer is the flagship product of the brewery and it's exported to more than 40 different countries worldwide. As I mentioned earlier, the word Duval translates into translates into English as devil from Brabantian, uh, from the, Bra the Brabantian, Ghent and Antwerp dialects of Dutch Flemish. And uh, the standard watch, the standard Dutch apparently is Duval, from what I understand. But uh, the beer was originally brewed under the moniker Victory Ale, in the 1920s to commemorate the end of the First World War and an avid drinker described it one day as Nun Echten Duvel and that's where the name comes from. That basically means a real devil and this was perhaps in um, in reference to the ABV because obviously it's 8.5% but the name after this became known as Duvel. So yeah, it's basically a kind of play on words if you like. Um, but these beers are brewed with Pilsner malt and dextrose and they're hot with sats and styrian goldings and the yeast stems from the original culture of Scottish yeast which was brought by Albert Murtkat back um, from a business tour just after the First World War. So uh, yeah, Duvel does have a little bit of a Scottish connection to it, a Scottish yeast 
forms the basis of their house yeast if you like. But like I said, these guys are one of the best known breweries in the world these days. Duval is an instantly recognisable name, so when they released a new beer, it's always quite interesting. We've had a few interesting ones from these guys over the years. Uh, we've had the um, Triple Hop uh, Citra, the Triple Hop Cashmere, the original Duval of course, and now we have this one. We've had one or two others. Uh, that are brewed under this name as well. I've reviewed quite a few Firestone Walkers. I've never reviewed anything from De Kunik and um, I, need, I need to see what else I've had from these guys. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about uh, Duval Murt Hat Brewery at the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer Untapped, pardon me, and Rate Beer pages to learn more about all the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer itself then. So as I mentioned to you earlier, this one comes in at 6.66% ABV, which is suggested by the name. You can see the artwork on this one is quite nice, it is fairly similar to what we've seen from Duval before, but you can see there's also a special bottle cap on this one, so I need to keep that for my collection. But uh, yeah, I think the six comma six six percent in this one is a reference to you know the number of the beast the devil and things like that so um yeah this beer is of course brewed with czech sats and styrian goldings uh, sats of course tend to be a little bit more kind of spicy if you like than the likes of hallertau and tintnanger from germany and styrian goldings have really got a nice kind of grassy element to them those of course come from uh, slovenia but yeah 330 milliliter bottle this one nicely presented as always and you can see the little kind of dancing thing on the back there which uh, which comes across really nicely but yeah i think i paid about 30 swedish kroners for this beer so that's roughly about three euros um you know what's it going to be about two pounds fifty maybe three dollars fifty american so yeah not too bad but uh, yeah definitely a bit more expensive than it would be down in belgium of course but yeah let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting the other thing i should have said in the the uh, history section there was that it's the fourth generation of the um of the Murt Hut uh, family who are now in charge of this brewery. But uh, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste and then. Very curious to see what it has in store for us. Oh, I thought it was going to explode there, but it seems to be all right. But uh, yeah, let's get this guy out and into the glass. It's wondering how the head's going to be on this. You've always got to be careful with these Belgian beers because they're all about the yeast and the secondary fermentation in the bottle. So the trick is, always just pour them slowly. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to fade away pretty quickly, that head, though. So there we are. Uh, yes. We go. Let me just check that this is lined up again, because then my OCD is happy. But um, yeah. So as you can see and as you would expect, from a Belgian blonde. This one has poured a lovely bright golden straw blondy yellow colour. Look at that. You can see that it's poured with a finger and a half of a frothy, I would say perfect white head. That is going to gradually fade away, but there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there, but I mean overall it does look pretty nice. If I put my fingers behind the glass you can see it does have a little bit of that kind of natural haze to it. You'll find this with a lot of Belgian beers actually. And again, this is due to the secondary fermentation in the bottle. If you actually look closely at it, you can see there's quite a few little particles floating around in suspension in this one. But um, yeah, I think it comes across uh, really nicely. And it's, it's, there's nothing overly surprising about this beer uh, in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is. So um, yeah, nothing more to really say about the appearance of this. It looks exactly as you would expect from, uh, from a Belgian blonde beer. So yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma of this one and just see how we get on. Very curious about this. That does smell quite nice, actually. Belgian blondes, of course, are not the most kind of pungent of, um, of Belgian styles of beer. For me, my favorite Belgian beers probably would be the blondes the uh, Tripels, the Quadrupels, and then the Flanders Reds. I like those, but I do like the Lambic beers as well, in fairness, but those are more of a kind of treat beer, a sort of tasting beer rather than a sort of session one. But these days, you know, I very rarely drink the same beer more than once. For me, it's all about just tasting different stuff. That's what I really enjoy. But, um, yeah, the, the aroma of this beer is quite nice, and it is what you'd expect. So, I mean, where to start with this one, then? Let's 
kind of have a little look at it. So straight away with this beer, you're going to notice it has got that nice kind of doughy, bready, yeasty sort of thing that you expect of a Belgian beer, absolutely. Um, so that forms the backbone of the beer, absolutely. A little bit of that doughy, bready, yeasty sort of thing. It's got a little bit of a kind of clovey note to it. A little bit, you know, you get a few of these kind of banana, bubble gummy sort of candy notes. And that is just the yeasty backbone of the beer, absolutely. But definitely a nice sort of white, a fresh white bread sort of thing to this one. There is a little bit of a more kind of grainy bread crusty element to the beer as well. And maybe a little bit of a kind of Jacob's cream cracker sort of thing too. There's a few little different elements going on in the malt base in this one. Um, you can definitely detect the Pilsner malt in this as well. You know, Pilsner malt for me, um, it can often give you a little bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness. You definitely get a wee bit of a McVitie's digestive biscuity kind of thing out of this beer, absolutely. But Pilsner malt always gives you a, Pilsner malt always gives you just this kind of crispness and you can smell that in the nose um, right away. I really like how that, um, how that pieces together in this beer, absolutely. Um, yeah, so definitely a nice bit of a kind of lighter Pilsner malt in this one. Some sweet biscuity caramelly notes, obviously. So yeah, I really like how everything um, pieces together in this beer for sure. I think it's a really, um, I think it's a really really interesting um, beer actually. So thumbs up to uh, to Duvel on the aroma of this one. I think they've pulled it off quite well. It's got everything that you would want from a Belgian blonde in terms of its kind of malty yeasty type qualities. Um, I do wonder if it's got a little bit of wheat in it because it certainly does have a wee bit of bitiness. If you take the aroma in quite deeply, you do get a little bit of bitiness at the back of the nose. So I do wonder if there is a good little bit of wheaty character in there. You get the crispness from the um, you get the crispness from the the kind of pilsner malt, like I say, and then a nice kind of smooth uh, white bready and grainy note in there as well. So um, yeah, I like how this one kind of goes about its business. Um, yeah. Nothing else really that we need to say, I think, about the malty, yeasty side of this thing. It's everything that you would expect. On the hoppy side of things as well, it's it's kind of what you would expect as well. There's a good little bit of um, earthiness to this one. You've got a nice floral aromaticity to it. I wouldn't describe it as being overly spicy and things like that, but you can smell a little bit of the difference between the... Um, the Czech sats, jatis as they would call it, and the Slovenian styrian goldings. You can smell that the grassy notes in this one are a little bit kind of brighter and more zesty in a sense. For me, that's one of the signs of um, of Slovenian styrian goldings. But you've got a nice bright floral aromaticity of this one, and just very slightly spicy. For me, that is a sign of the uh, the Czech sats. Actually, as I mentioned earlier, the German. Hallertau and Titnanger hops, they tend to be a little bit more sort of just um, bright, if you like, and a little bit more smooth in the earthiness, grassiness and floral notes, if that makes sense. Um, it surprised me that they don't use Belgian hops, to be honest with you. The Belgian ones are a little bit more kind of herbal than the, the German, uh, than the German, Czech or Slovenian hops, in my experience. But um, yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting to think about that. Definitely is interesting to think about these uh, little things with the beer. But yeah, a nice... Bright floral aromatic note out of this one, a little touch spicy as I say, some nice zesty grassiness and just a wee touch of earthiness in there at the back of the nose too. But um, yeah, in terms of the fruity side of the beer then, it is kind of what you'd expect. There is a good little bit of a lemony zesty sort of thing in this one, which I would attribute to the to the yeasty components of the beer. But you've got some apple notes, a little bit of a peri ester, um, all of this kind of thing coming out of it. Maybe a wee touch of a, a light sultana or something like that. Uh, maybe apricots as well. I think that's fair to say. A little bit of apricot, a bit of a kind of stronger lemony citrus, and then some apple and peri esters coming out of the beer. So all things that you would expect of a Belgian blonde beer. As I say, nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. So um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and just see how we get on. So yeah, this one is the Duval 666 coming in at 6.66% ABV, a Belgian blonde from Duval Murthart Brewery in Brindun town in Belgium. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, school, Proust, Salty. Cheers. what you'd expect to be honest it's just a nice sort of sessionable blonde beer i think this one is quite it is quite yeasty forward actually it is i get quite a lot of yeast out of this one but maybe that will kind of mellow out as we drink a bit more of it so let's try that i 
yeah, it does have a little bit of a, when you first take it in, it has got a little bit of a kind of yeasty bite to it actually, but I think that is going to mellow out a little bit more as we continue to sip on it, absolutely. So yeah, let's see how we, um, let's see how we can break down the flavour of this beer. I like this one. It is nice and, it is quite nice and solid, but it's definitely one of the more kind of yeasty forward um, Belgian blondes that I've come across. It actually feels a little bit heavier in alcohol than I think it actually is. But then again, that could just be because I've not had a Belgian brewed Belgian beer, if that makes sense, for quite a while. I've had quite a few quad repels and things like that. I had a quad repel from the Netherlands recently. I've had one or two Belgian style beers from up here in Sweden as well. But it's been a while since I've had a Belgian Belgian beer, if that makes sense. So uh, yeah, let's try and break this one down then. So what you'll notice about this beer is that straight away, it actually reflects the aroma really quite well. As I always say, take a bit of time to ponder over the aroma before you get stuck into these beers. That's always half the experience when it comes to craft beer, absolutely. But yeah, straight away with this beer, you can feel that nice kind of, um, you can feel that nice um, kind of yeasty quality, just blankets in the middle of your palate. It does have a wee bit of bite to it actually, and that sort of base layer of the beer has a nice kind of clovey spice to it. It's almost a little touch peppery as well. So that's forming the backbone of the beer. As you go further into the aftertaste, you will get a little bit more, you do get a wee touch of a banana, you know, a little bit of a kind of, um, you get a little bit of a banana, you know, you get a little bit of a, say, um, yeah, a little bit of a kind of banana, you know, a little bit of a sort of, um, just a little bit, a little bit of an almost bubble gummy kind of thing in it as well. You can feel on that front half of that middle third of your palate, it does kind of sweeten up a little bit. But yeah, you get a nice kind of grainy Jacob's cream crackery sort of thing about this. It does develop a little bit of a sort of pepperiness too, but as I say, it's got a little bit of a kind of spicy note which is quite interesting. And then you start to get the Pilsner multi qualities out of this beer too. So yeah, sitting on top of that, you do get a smooth kind of white uh, bready quality to the beer as well. So yeah. So yeah, it is, inter it is interesting how, um, how this beer goes about its business. On the back half of that, middle third of your palate, that's when you get the kind of Pilsner malt. You can feel the sort of crispness there just sitting on top of that soft kind of white bready layer that the beer has. So definitely a little bit of that. Then in the very centre of your palate, in the middle of that, um, in the middle of that um, middle third of your tongue, you get a wee bit of a concentrated kind of caramelly note to it, but then as you move further out from that, as you move further out from that, you start to get a little bit more of a... Um, you get a little bit more of a kind of um, Vitti's digestive biscuity sort of thing that just spreads away out towards the edge of the palate, which I think is um, is quite nice. Absolutely. So yeah, the flavour of this beer, I think it does build up and it does gradually get a little bit more sweet the further you go into the aftertaste. So um, yeah. I think I like how this beer goes together, absolutely. Um, yeah, middle of your palate's got a fair wee bit of complexity to it. So like I say, a little bit of a base of a kind of, it's got a base of a sort of clovey, peppery sort of spice almost. You get some of the, the kind of grainy elements out of the beer in there. It's almost got like a Jacob's Cream Crackery sort of thing. You get a few kind of bubble gummy banana notes on the front half of your palate, on the front half of that middle third of your tongue underneath, then you get the Jacob's, you get a bit of Jacob's cream cracker, then you get a bit of a white bread, a bit of Pilsner malt at the back on top of that, then um, more of a caramelly biscuity sort of thing on the front half of that middle third of your tongue. So yeah, it's interesting how that beer, uh, how that side of the beer goes together. The most complex part of this beer, of course, is in the centre of your palate, in that middle third of your tongue. But um, yeah, let's look at the other parts then. If you go to that border region between middle third and back third of your palate, you can feel there is a little bit of a kind of doughy yeasty you note know, builds up from there. You get a little bit of a kind of more grainy bread crusty note there too, but on the back um, third of your palate, there's a more kind of wheaty, 
Um, there is a little bit of a kind of wheaty element to this one. I wouldn't be surprised if this beer does have a little touch of wheat in it because it just gives you a little bit of that bitiness. But you can feel the sort of airy, yeasty elements kind of sitting on top of that and just kind of thicken up. So as you go from the back of the beer, the thickness is kind of like this and then it just drops down, if you like, at that border region to like this. And then it's very kind of dense, actually. It's very kind of condensed in that middle third of your palate. So, yeah, I like how um, how all of that goes about its business. And um, I like how all of the how it goes about its business, this beer, for sure. But um, yeah, the 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 malty yeasty side of this beer, I think, is um, is pretty nicely done. It's um, it's definitely it is actually just very similar to the regular Duval this, but you know a little bit lower in alcohol. I think I, I don't. I had Duval with um, with Thomas from Thomas Open recently, and it's, it it does just taste like a slightly lighter version, to be honest with you. There's not too much difference between it. But then again, the recipe isn't all that different, so that's not really surprising. It's just a slightly lighter and more sessionable version, to be honest. But um, yeah, in terms of the um, in terms of the the hoppy side of the beer, then so if you go to the back corners of the palate, you do get a little bit of earthiness out of this one. As you move further forward, it develops a little bit of a herbal quality, and as you move forward along the kind of front, uh, as you move forward along the kind of front. Uh, sides of your tongue it's got a good little bit of floral aromaticity to it and it's quite a bright floral note as well you get a nice kind of big sort of spicy floral, floral aromatic note this one that's the Czech sats but then round the very front curve of the palate it's got a little bit of a lighter kind of grassy sort of thing to it and you get a wee touch of zestiness as well so um yeah the floral side of this beer I think is um is very very nice so it gets a thumbs up from me absolutely So, um, green component of this beer is kind of what you'd expect. Grassy zestiness from the Slovenian hops, a little bit of a spiciness from the um, from the, the Czech, Czech hops in this one too. But let's focus on the fruity part of the beer. So on that front third of your tongue, as I always say, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll the way out of the beer. But again, if you go to that border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you can feel there's a little bit of a thicker yeasty component to it, a bit of a graininess as well. Underneath that, you can feel a little bit of a smooth, white bready sort of thing, which I can really appreciate. Um, but there's also, um, you know, it's it's also just got a little bit of bite to it as well, which is quite interesting. But in the fruity side of the beer, if you go towards the back, of that front third of your palate, you will get a wee bit more of a kind of concentrated citrusy note out of it. And as you move further forward, it's a little bit sort of um, apricot-y, which I do like. Um, so you get a wee bit of apricot-y note out of this one. And then as you reach the kind of front half of that front third of your tongue, you get more of a kind of um, pear-y, apple-y sort of ester coming out of it as well. So I can really appreciate how, um, how that side of things um, how that side of things goes together, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean it's 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 kind of what I would have expected to be honest. It really just tastes like a lighter version of the original Duval, to be honest. So I'm not overly surprised by it. It's nice enough. It's nice and drinkable. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting example. Of this um, I, I would have thought, you know, that's one of the things. I mean, six point six percent. It's still got a fair alcohol content to it, and I can understand why they would do the Duval. Do 666 because of the, the ties to the devil and stuff. But if they were going to do a more sensible one, would it not be more kind of poignant if you like to take it a little bit lower than this to like 5% or something? I don't know. I'm trying to remember what percentage uh, the likes of Leffe is because Leffe is the very prominent Belgian blonde. I honestly, could. I think that might be about 55 or 6%. I honestly don't know. But um, yeah. It is a nice and solid enough Belgian blonde beer, this, so have a go at it for yourself and just see what you think. But let's round off this review with a quick look at the mouthfeel then. So yeah, I think it's fair to describe this beer as kind of mid-bodied. The carbonation has a little bit of crispness to it, which is you know what you'd expect with a Belgian beer bottle fermentation. You're going to get quite a lot of carbonation in these beers, absolutely. And there is just a wee bit of wetness and crispness to the beer overall. But there's a nice little bit of, uh, of bitterness to it. It's got a sort of 
it has kind of about 30, I think it's maybe about 25 or 30 IBUs this one. It's got a little bit of bitterness to it, which is nice from the hops. Good little bit of fruit, fruitiness, a little bit of a zesty kind of bite to it. And a wee touch of kind of oily character as well. Um, so yeah, the, the, the middle of your palate is quite smooth. It's got a little bit of kind of greyiness and it develops a wee bit of sweetness as well. That's the most complex part of the beer. A wee bit of hoppy bitterness and then just a kind of citrusy, zesty, leaning fruity side. So um, yeah, I like how, um, how this beer goes about its business. So hey, it's a thumbs up from me. It's an interesting addition to the range from Duval. I don't know how long it's going gonna, it's gonna to be around for if they're going to keep this one. But um, yeah be interesting to see if they can add a few more kind of additions to the triple hop series as well. I know at some stage they did a triple hop Amarillo, so maybe like a triple hop Galaxy or something like that could be an interesting one. A triple hop Nelson Sovian would be really interesting as well. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one was the Duval 666 from uh, Duval Murdhat Brewery in Brindon down in Belgium. Interesting to review another Duval beer for you, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Slange it, skull, cheers, and catch you guys in the next review.